Hey, welcome everybody. Everybody who's jumping in now, if you wanna tell us where you're coming from in the chat box, um, we're gonna get started right here at 11 o'clock. Um, so hang in just a couple more minutes, but yeah, tell us where you're coming from in the, in the chat box.
For those of you just joining, welcome. Um, we're gonna get started here um, in just a couple minutes, right at 11. Um, so um, if you haven't already, tell us where you're coming from in the chat box. Um, we will get started shortly. Good morning, everybody from Denver, Colorado. Thanks for joining us. You guys are smart to get in early because we got a pretty full house today. It's going to be kind of fun. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, people from all over the place. Welcome. Yes, I see Karen Daw, the OSHA ladies joining us. I see hey. Jack. Hi, so, Karen. Yes, we have to limit this to 500 of our closest friends because uh, that's how much Zoom will let us have. Mm -hmm. That's is super fun. Lots of new people, which is good. Hey, I see someone from Pueblo. I was born and raised there, welcome. Hey, that's cool, that's cool. I think we're ready to, to jump in. Let's see. So welcome everybody. Um, I wanna thank everybody for joining us today um, on today's episode of Dental Waterlines. No, just kidding, but <laughs> today we're gonna to be going over all things Dental today's Waterlines. Episode. Today's, oh, today's episode. Oh, today's episode, yeah. So um, let's just jump right in. Um, a quick disclosure before we get started. Um, Kelly, Mike, and myself are all full-time employees of Crow Edge Dental Water Labs. So without further ado, um, the star of our show, Kelly, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, thank you. I don't know so much about the star. I'm with a bunch of, everyone here is a star. So uh, <laughs> thank you though, Carly, I appreciate that. Um, yes, hi everyone, I'm Kelly T. I um, am, am the Senior Consultant Education Specialist here at Pro Edge. Basically what that means is I get to work with offices uh, all day, um, all week, uh, along with Carly um, and, and Mike sometimes gets pulled back into it because um, he's the ex, he's definitely the expert, but uh, we get to work with offices to help them improve uh, their water quality and establish a safe water uh, protocol for their office. Uh, been working for ProEdge going on four years, almost four years now, at the end of the month will be four years. I have a background in nursing um, I was a urology nurse, so kind of a total different realm of waterworks, uh, but still um, have always had a passion for infection control nonetheless. So uh, really glad to be among some really awesome people. Welcome again to people from all over, from, man, uh, Tennessee to uh, uh, Pueblo, like I said, welcome Pueblo, uh, and just to, to everyone. Um, and then would just like to, to introduce uh, Carly and, and Mike. And like I said, Carly, 
uh, gets to work with um, offices just at, like I do. She's a safe water specialist. She is awesome. Uh, so if most most likely if you call here, you'll you'll talk to Carly or I. Um, like I said, we work with offices all week, um, all day, every day to help them improve their water quality or just set up a protocol um, that's going to ensure safe water for their office. And then a, again, the expert of experts on the call is Mike. He's been doing this for a long time. Um, so Forever. this is the team. We've got a great team here and um, awesome to be able to work with, with them. Um, so like I said, I get to work with offices all day, every day. Carly uh, would agree. Uh, and Mike, don't want to put you down as a woman on a mission, but we are truly people on a, on a mission to, to help offices um, not only to establish a, a safe water uh, protocol for their offices, um, but to, to do it eff effectively and efficiently. And that's really the objective for today. Uh, we want to help you uh, know the importance of having that robust protocol for your office. Uh, and we wanna teach you how to do it effectively, but also efficiently. We wanna teach you how to do it in a, in a way that's gonna to be most cost-effective, um, save you money, but to consistently get good test results. Uh, but the main thing uh, that we want to let to to cover today and to let you know um, is how much that you, we appreciate you. No matter what realm of dentistry you're in, whether it's in sales, you're a dentist, hygienist, assistant, um, whatever realm you're in, we thank you. We appreciate you. You are not overlooked by us at all. So thank you. Um, saw this picture on LinkedIn and it just definitely caught uh, caught our eye. I mean, this is going on now, man, it's already a year, right? So 20, hopefully 21, 2021 gets better. But uh, as of now, and this is a, this is the same office clearly prior or pre COVID. And then now um, during COVID all the PPE and all the stuff that uh, you guys have to wear to keep your, yourselves safe, your patients safe, um, you know, disinfecting and all the other um, in, increasing, uh, the increasements in, um, infection control that you are, you've already had enough, right? Uh, and now you just had to, to increase it with, with COVID and such. So, man, it's hard enough for me to wear a mask inside of a store or wherever. So, geez, I mean, wearing all of this, this garb and PPE is, is just mind blowing. And so, man, we know how uncomfortable that means it must be. And you do it for, for people. We sit in your chairs every six months. So you do it for us, you do it for your patients. Uh, and we, we, we see you, you're not, you're not overlooked by us um, at all. So thank you so much from all of us at ProEdge to all of you. A quick laundry list before we get started here. Um, so all uh, registered attendees will be able to see, uh, receive one CE credit. Yay, that's super exciting. <laughs> and then we'll also have a gift at the end. Yeah. Um, so it, it, this video will be recorded um, and available on YouTube. So um, you can always check it out, share it with your friends. Uh, we'll be utilizing uh, Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions throughout, jot them down. Um, we'll get to all of those at the end. Um, but I, we're going to be going over a lot of information today. So um, just know that one hour is never enough. Um, if you have additional questions, you can give us a call anytime. Again, speak with Kelly or myself or even Mike, um, and we can um, get to know your office and your protocol and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so Kelly, for those that are that are new to the biofilm party, can you tell us what we're talking about? Yes, absolutely. So uh, yeah, and this might be basic for a lot of you. And if it is, we're just going to kind of go through it really quick here. But yeah, if you're new to the to, to kind of water lines and this whole, um, you know, what lines are we talking about? We wanted to kind of just give you a quick overview. Uh, so you're not going through the whole presentation like, wait, what lines are we talking about? So we want to just kind of give you a quick overview. And again, like Carly mentioned, an hour is never enough. So we'll give you our contact information at the end or jot down your questions, we'll get them answered. But real quick, we wanna talk about the what, what water lines we're gonna be talking about, what water lines we are experts at, um, and it's these. So it's the, the water that's gonna be putting, or the, the lines that are gonna be putting water into your patient's mouth. Um, so your air water syringe lines, your uh, hand piece line, uh, ultrasonic scaler, those lines, those are the water lines that we are gonna teach you how to uh, clean and maintain. We are not talking about these, the evacuation lines. 
that's not our area of expertise. Um, so again, we're talking about the, putting the, the water that's going into your patient's mouth, not the lines that are that are going out. I know before working here, but you know, just going to the dental office, looking at all those lines, I had no idea which ones were which. There are so many, um, so it was all confusing to me. Um, so again, we're talking about the, the water going uh, going into your patient's mouth, those lines. And also, you're going to hear us talk about um, three things, and you're going to hear us say these words a lot during this presentation. So wanted to just kind of briefly co uh, cover what they are, so you're not like, what? what? Like, they've said this word uh, a million times, and I have no idea what they're talking about. So uh, the first one, and basically what we like to call this is the three steps of safe water, and we'll again, we'll dive deeper into it, or we'll dive deeper into it further in the slide, in the slide deck, but Basically, the first thing is, is shocking. And you're going to hear us say the word shock or shocking a um, hundred times. What do you think? A lot. Right? Keep, someone, keep count. someone keep tally. See, <laughs> just kidding. So you'll hear us talk about that a lot. But it's important. Um, and what shocking is, is it's just using a strong chemical to clean out the insides of your lines or a strong disinfectant that's going to clean out the insides of those water lines. Uh, and then the second one is treating, and that's just using a low level antimicrobial. So like tablets, like blue tab or ICX, citrusil, or straws like blue tube, uh, dentipure, sterosil. Um, those are the low level antimicrobials that are gonna treat uh, your water lines that you're gonna use after you get them clean by shocking. Um, and then step three is testing. And that's just verification that step one, shocking, and step two, treating, Work, are working and that's gonna prove also that you meet CDC compliance. Um, and and CDC, and that, that's where the, the rubber meets the road, right? That you gotta prove it because you can be doing everything but if you don't have that, that uh, testing and that proof, uh, it, it's not like, it's like it didn't happen. But speaking of CDC uh, compliance, um, I know they put out some an interim kind of, I mean, this is this kind of what they have said before but Mike, can you talk a little bit more about this, what they put out in I believe August? August 3rd at 10, 15? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sometime in August. <laughs> well, actually the CDC updates their website every month, or every month or so. So it's kind of a good idea. And experts will check that website regularly. Um, but yeah, when we, when we first reopened after COVID, and for most people, I think it might've been May or June, um, where they'd had a shutdown for, they've been shut down for a few weeks, the CDC and uh, came out and said before, expanding dental care practices before going back to what we were doing, which was full speed ahead, uh, they, the CDC said, test your water quality to make sure it meets the standard. We got a big spike, uh, right, in, uh, in interest and in business and the webinars were pretty full in May and June and um, people were asking questions and testing their water, it was awesome. Um, and it's because the CDC said so, right? They said, test your water. They, shed, they said, shock as needed. And then they say, continue to treat your water and continue to monitor your water following the instructions for use from your manufacturer of your equipment or of your dental water line treatment product. And so I know this uh, may be, you know, review for a lot of you. I know, I think most dental offices are, are open now. Um, but we just want to touch on this really quickly just to really um, let you know uh, the unique situation that COVID caused um, for dental unit water lines. So obviously COVID led to these this long shutdown, those, that shutdown led to stagnation. So um, just stagnant water sitting in your lines. Um, stagnation leads to more biofilm development um, and that biofilm creates the perfect environment for, um, for, for pathogens. So we're not so worried that uh, COVID-19 is going to grow in your water lines, but what we are worried about are pathogens like Mycobacterium abscessus, Pseudomonas legionella, um, things like that. Um, so again, COVID really caused a unique situation. And so um, if, if never, now is a really, really great time to pay attention to, um, you know, your water lines and, and to, um, to, you know, uh, just your goal is to get safe water for patients. Um, and this, you know, COVID didn't cause this situation. It's been a problem for a very long time. It was called dentistry's dirty little secret. Um, right guys? Yes. <laughs> yeah. For decades, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, see, whatever they say, decades, they're referring to the old like, man. Mike, do you want to touch? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just right. a joke. That's just a joke. The old man's going to tell you back. I re yes, in the 80s, when in, when there was the last pandemic that we were afraid of, uh, there was a 60 Minutes show or something that talked about, uh, you know, dirt, uh, dentistry's dirty little secret. That, and they actually said, dental unit water is dirtier than the water in your toilet. So, of course, since we have access to wa a water testing laboratory, we went ahead and tested our toilet water. Yeah, and we're safe. We all, that? <laughs> we yeah. have a problem here. We test yeah, everything. We do. We're kind of knucklehead. We're, we're nerds for dental water lines. And it, get this, this is from the tank of our toilet in the warehouse, 5,200 CFUs. Not great, but not as bad as from our Brita filter. Our, the pitcher that we use to make coffee and tea has 88,000 or 52,000. And we get test results that are over 90,000. That's what our machine quits counting at about 90,000, I think, right? So uh, that after, if it's more than 90,000, it's too numerous for even the machine to count. So we know that it's a problem. We, you don't need to freak out about it because by and large, you know, if your water's contaminated, you can probably drink it and it might make you a little sick and it might make you queasy to think about. Um, but uh, it won't, it by and large, it does, most of the biofilm that grows in delicate water lines is non-pathogenic, except for those three that Carly mentioned, Pseudomonas Legionella and this new one, Mycobacterium abscessus, which is really nasty, makes healthy kids sick. Um, that's why we care, right? But by and large, it won't make you sick. Most of them are, most of the biofilm is safe. Um, I shouldn't say safe. Most of the biofilm, most of the bugs that grow in there are non-pathogenic, um, but there are certain bugs that, that, that might have your name on them. That's how Shannon Mills says it, right? He says, there's a bug out there with your name on it. So let's make sure your water lines are perfect and they can be perfect. And we're here to help you. You gotta just learn how to do the three things in the three steps that we mm -hmm. talked about. I know. Just, just look at those pictures. I, yeah. you would never believe that that came out of an air water syringe or, or something yeah. like that. We've, yeah, oh, we've, we've seen some stuff. Yeah. We still, right, Kelly, Carly, we still get pictures from people all the time and we oh, still yeah. see. If you ever have them, please send them. We'd love to look at them. Yeah. <laughs> We're uh, nerds. Waterline nerds. They already think we're weirdos. So yeah, they just go, go ahead, send us some, send us your ugly pictures. <laughs> That's okay. We're, we're proud of being nerds. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now, um, now that we know that bacteria is a huge problem in our, in our dental unit water lines, um, let's talk about the why. The why is super important. It's what we do, what we do, and it's why we, you know, why we are nerds about dental unit water lines. Um, Kelly, why don't you tell us about Mimi Morales? Yeah, Carly, thank you. And I, you know, I love to start with the why. Uh, and, and in all seriousness, it is a really a, a serious problem. Um, and this is just, this is just one of the reasons. Uh, and, 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 like, and like you were saying, COVID just kind of brought an awareness about um, with, with viruses and bacteria and stuff, but waterline contamination has been going on for decades, like Mike said. Uh, and a, a few years back, there was an outbreak in Anaheim. Uh, this is Mimi Morales, this sweet little face here. Um, and she is just one of the many, many faces um, of why dental you know, waterline maintenance is, is super, super important. So she uh, uh, was a seven-year-old little girl who went in for routine pulpotomy. Uh, again, it was in uh, Anaheim, uh, I, what, two years ago or so, maybe three now. I'm not exactly sure uh, when the exact year. Um, but she developed a severe, severe infection in her mouth. Uh, the doctor, the infectious disease specialist on call, uh, said that she had never seen such a severe oral infection in all of her career. That's how bad it was. Uh, she had to have numerous surgeries, uh, had to have part of her jaw bone re removed, I believe, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, but her grandmother said something to the fact that the doctor re removed as much bone as possible without disfiguring her. Um, so, and, it, and this was all due to, to waterline contamination. Um, Again, hospitalized for more than a month, uh, and finally, um, after trying, you know, every pretty much every antibiotic, uh, finally, what worked was the antibiotic that was created to treat leprosy, um, which in itself comes with severe, lifelong side effects. So not only does she have, you know, part of her jawbone removed, permanent teeth removed, um, but she has to deal with with also um, side effects from the cure. 
Uh, and this is just preventable, guys. And, and this isn't the first infection that happened. There was one in Atlanta beforehand. And unfortunately, it's, it's, it's not going to be the last. So it's just really something that's it's preventable. And that's why we do our job, because we don't want to see another, another meanie um, or another anyone get sick, whether it be a patient, a, a dentist, a, a, any dental pro. We don't want anyone else to get sick because of dental unit water lines. Um, oh, sorry, Carly. No worries. Mike, why don't you run us through um, the, the timeline here? What kind of all went, what happened? With yeah, this. that story tugs on your heartstrings, and uh, it would make a really good episode of NCIS or one of those TV shows if it wasn't a true story that is really heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there was a series of miracles that happened that we even found out about it. The first miracle is Mimi's one of the first ones to show up at Children's Hospital of Orange County, right? Uh, her grandma brings her in. Um, and it's a miracle that the doctor that was on call on that Saturday was a, a pediatric infectious disease expert. And as Kelly said, she'd never seen anything so bad. She got on, uh, she tried all the normal antibiotics, right? None of them worked. They had to use that nasty one for uh, leprosy. And then another miracle a month later when a second child shows up with similar symptoms and the same doctors on call. If that wouldn't have happened, who knows how long it would take to find out. And then so she was able to see the similarity in the cases. She was the one, this doctor was the one that put it together, did the forensic history, found out that Mimi and the second kid had gone to the same, had gone to the dentist recently. Not actually not that recently, as it turns out, because <laughs> this infection's incubation period is up to a year, over a year. The average incubation is 90 days. So if the doc anyway, the doctor started asking, they started seeing more patients, and her third kid shows up. Right, um, and then a fourth kid, and then it's on the local news, and it's a dentist's worst nightmare, because the doc, because the vans were out front of this practice. All these kids were at the same practice, right? They all had the same procedure of pulpotomy. Many of them sat in the same chair. The Orange County went out there and tested the water. They found yes, these kids were uh, infected by an infection caused by contaminated delinquent water lines. Healthy children contaminated by delinquent water lines, and then. The vans show up out in front of this, and they're there every morning in Southern California. If you weren't in Southern California, you probably didn't see it until it was bigger. But they're saying, it's a parent's worst nightmare. You take your healthy kid to the dentist, and they're in the hospital for three months. They all had multiple surgeries. So that made more kids show up at the hospital when they said, oh, that looks familiar. When it got to be 73 kids that showed up, it was on the national news, and the website shut down. The Orange County had their own website because the lawsuits got involved. So we only knew about 71 patients. We now know more than that. Um, they were all kids between two and 11. They all had, most of them, they're all hospitalized, had surgery, several of them. Most of them had multiple surgeries. And, and as Kelly said, uh, nasty surgeries. They tried to not disfigure these kids. They're all gonna need implants when their jaws are fully developed. But the, here's the big number. This 85 days before there were any symptoms that's huge. Right? So think about that. You, you go to the children's hospital or you go to the ERs and you, they say, ooh, have you been to the dentist? You're going to say, we haven't been to the dentist for six months. That could have happened, right? This is a nasty disease. This is mycobacterium obsessus. And it's supposed to go to trial this year, right, Carly? Yeah. So um, we can actually go through a quick um, update of where those um, cases are at right now. So again, uh, the case with Mimi Morales and those 71 other kids happened in 2016, um, or those 200 other patients, I'm sorry. Um, so the trial is ongoing. Um, it was actually postponed until January of 21. We don't currently have an update on that, but uh, it was it was a really long going, um, going case. And then the one in Atlanta um, with the 35 patients contracting the mycobacterium abscesses, that's ongoing as well. We don't know. Um, where they're at with that, but um, this is this is serious stuff. I mean, we get calls every few months um, with dentists and, and and hygienists and just dental pros worried that um, their patient has um, gotten infected. So really, not every case is on the news. That's the big thing that we want to think about here. Not every I, case is on the news. I just want to jump in and say, yeah. Kelly and Carly know about cases that don't make the news because right. you guys take the calls, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Every month or so, a doctor will call and say, we've had an infection. Or, and not even just with their patient, but with themselves. I had a dentist call um, 
that got mycobacterium abscessus and his, his doctor told him to have his water lines tested and sure enough, and he had actually gotten it in his lungs or some, I don't know exactly what happened with that, but it was the dentist himself. So it, you know, it can happen to, to dental pros too, not just to your patients. So it's really important to, to know that as well. It happens more often than you think. Mm -hmm. um, so now that we've talked about the, the why um, behind all of this, let's talk about the how. How does bacteria grow so well in um, dental unit water lines, Kelly? Yeah, so now that everything's kind of back open and I know talking to offices uh, that are testing now and um, kind of things are back on track and things are busier. And I think uh, most of the people I talk to, they, they say it's busier now than, than be ever before, I think because people were not able to get into their dentist. And so now it's like, everyone's kind of a rush to get in. And I, I don't know if people are having to still stagger or whatnot, but but even in the, in the busiest time, so even now or even pre-COVID or whatnot, but even in the busiest dental office, dental unit water lines, they're super small for one, tiny, 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 and they sit stagnant at room temperature most of the day. So they're less like this, like a river, and they're more like this, like a, like a pond. And no one wants to think about, uh, think that they're squirting, oh my gosh, this brown pond water into, into our patient's mouth. Like, we don't want to think that, right? That's not what our goal is. We would never do that on purpose or, you, you know, knowingly put this brown stagnant water. But in all reality, when, when you're, if you think about it, you only use your air water syringe or your hand piece, you know, a few seconds there or a few seconds here, a few seconds there. And, and so the water sits stagnant the rest of the day. Um, and so I'd like to use the analogy, uh, yes, of a dandelion. And uh, I always, I always say this and I uh, just kind of, my, my other coworker makes fun of me because I'm like, I was walking outside and saw a bunch of dandelions, but it snowed like two feet. So I can't really say that today. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> so, but, but seriously, in spring, you know, you see a dandelion or when you're a kid, you blew, you blew on the little dandelion and what happens? The seeds kind of disperse. And they, they go throughout and next thing you know, you got dandelions kind of popping up all over your yard or you see them in the park or whatnot. Um, same thing just with the, with the air water syringe or with the bacteria that's in your water lines. So when you squirt your air water syringe or use your hand piece, you're just some of that, that biofilm or bacteria that's stuck to the side of the little tiny lines, it just kind of breaks off, it rolls off, it sloughs off, it breaks off in chunks. I hate that word, but it does, it can. And then it just goes down the tree and you stop when you, when you stop using your water, it just stops and it has time to reattach to the tubing and the whole process of growing begins very quickly. And, um, and once it starts to grow, it grows exponentially and it takes that strong chemical uh, sh about shocking to get rid of it. Um, and, and Mike, do you wanna talk a little bit more about the science or Carly? I, don't, I know I'm not that great at this slide for sure. <laughs> okay, here, let, let me tell a story. <laughs> The, um, this slide is Kelly's favorite, right? I hate this. I, I just, my, I can't think of words that come. I know how to explain it, but I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. yeah. So I'm like, Mike, help me. <laughs> so there's lots of analogies for biofilm. The dandelion is really a good one because everybody recognizes the fact that when we use an air water syringe, we squirt it for about three seconds. And in three seconds, the water goes downstream about this far and the bugs reattach and grow. So of all of these things over here that Kelly hates, over here on the lower, in the lower right-hand corner where it says, what's the most important part in the life cycle of a biofilm? What's the most important part? When they attach, when they grow, or when they detach, and then they go downstream, they can go upstream. There's documented studies that you can put sterile water in the dental water line, and in 24 hours, it's back in the bottle growing biofilm. Oh. Thank you very much. But by and large, we're pushing it downstream, but just not enough, right? You can't, flushing the lines is not enough to stop biofilm from growing. Um, and one of the reasons for that, and this, we've just learned this recently since we got this new flow cytometer, we have learned that dead biofilm plays a huge role in the growth of live biofilm because biofilm is carnivore, not a carnivore, a cannibal, a cannibal. So imagine, imagine, and so there's a whole series there's a whole series of thought that by those guys, those geniuses up in Montana, the Montana State University, they have an Institute of Biofilm Research, 
part of learning how to disinfect these things is learning how to disrupt the communication between all of them, right? All of these different cells have different jobs and some of them go downstream like scouts and plant the flag and then more people show up and grow and they're all, can they're all cannibals. So imagine, and some of them, maybe some of them are clowns. So here's the story. These two biofilm are eat, they're cannibals. They're eating a clown, a clown biofilm. And one of them says the other one, does this taste funny? Come on, that's a joke. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. sorry. That, yes, you knew I was going to find a way to sneak that joke in there. Dr. Rudin, he's, 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 got, he's got it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so... So that it's absolutely true that we that, uh, bacteria can really reach high levels in five days. Um, biofilm is stubborn. That's really it. That's what we've learned. That's why Kelly and Carly are on the phone all day. If you walk through our office, you're going to hear the word shock everywhere you go all day long. As we teach people how to shock. If you want safe water, you want to learn how to shock, you're going to learn how often to shock. Yeah, my favorite part of this slide um, really is the fact that you can put sterile water in brand new water lines and bacteria can grow up to 200 colony forming units in less than five days. So it's really crazy how quick, um, and there's, there's data to back it up. Um, so really it's, it's strong, it's powerful, it's fat, it grows fast, it's, it's crazy. Um, so let's move on to um, the how. So how can we be dental water compliant? This is um, where we want to help you guys really um, develop a good protocol and we want to give you the most helpful uh, recommendations that we have for, for how to be um, in compliance. And so that, that's the first thing is knowing the CDC guidelines. Um, so in 2003, uh, the CDC put out a set of guidelines um, for dental unit water quality. And um, as you can see on the map here, 33 um, dental state boards require CDC compliance as law. So if your state is in the light blue, you are required to follow the CDC guidelines. Um, and these guidelines were put in place not only to protect your patients from infections um, like Mimi, but to protect your practice as well. And that's where the documentation comes in, um, the testing and just everything that you have that proves that you are following the CDC guidelines. Um, and new news with Washington, right, Mike? Yeah, right, Washington passed the, it's, it's in, in Washington, it's a law, it's a legislation. It says a, dent, a dentist shall test his water lines, shall test every water line every 90 days. You can do combined samples, keep your records for 90 days shock as needed. Keep your record for five years. I don't five know years. <laughs> it's Friday. Way more than ideas. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Every, keep your records for five years. Holy cow. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a lot. Hey, of, Friday. There's a lot of information um, to learn with the CDC guidelines. So that's why we've actually um, taken the CDC guidelines on dental water quality, and we've broken them down into three pillars. Um, so the first one is going to be water for surgeries. Um, and we cannot stress this enough, um, how important it is to use sterile water and a sterile delivery system for when you're doing any type of invasive um, or surgical procedure. Kelly, do you want to touch on that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. And this is so, so important and just, and just critical uh, that you're anytime you're doing any type of surgical procedures and the CDC clearly defines them. Um, if you, if you need help, if you want to clear definition of them, you can go to the website or we have them here. You can, you know, get in touch with us. We can let you know, but the, this is the definition of what the CDC does, um, uh, their definition of a surgical procedure. So all of these things. So if you're doing any of these procedures, it's really important that you use sterile water, but not only sterile water, but it needs to be from a sterile source or from a sterile delivery system. You can't just open up a bottle of sterile water, pour it into your regular dental unit, and then just use it that way. Once you do that, it's no longer sterile. So you have to have that sterile uh, single use, you know, sterile handpiece or sur surgical handpiece where you have the, uh, the single you know, disposable uh, kind of saline or sterile water bag there where you can throw it away and then just autoclave your, your, your handpiece or even a bulb syringe um, with the, the dap and dish or a monoject or a, big, a bigger syringe. I, I mean, bulb syringe, I think of like infants. So I, I hate that word, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that grosses me out to even, 
you know, because when I say that, it's just like, oh gosh, it's, it reminds me of my, my children, but yeah. But, but for, it's really, really important to use, uh, to, to use uh, not only sterile water or saline, but from a sterile source. That, that's really, really important. Yeah, um, here's another uh, news article. Um, this happened not long ago. Um, a, a dentist was actually not using sterile water uh, and a sterile delivery system for uh, the, the surgical procedures and 15 patients, healthy patients, contracted endocarditis. Um, and there was even one, one patient passed away. Um, but this is really just a reminder of how important it, it is to use sterile water and a sterile delivery system with any of those invasive procedures. Um, so the, let's go over the second, um, little pillar that we have here, and that's going to be your dental unit water quality. Um, so the EPA put out a guideline for, um, drinking water, municipal water, and that is going to be um, 500 colony farming units or less. Um, so there's multiple ways that you can achieve and maintain that. Um, we'll go over some of those reasons more, but uh, some of them are using water bottles on your units, um, flushing for 20 to 30 seconds in between patients, um, your chemical treatment and your shock treatment, which again, we'll dive more into what that means um, here shortly. Um, but the third one most important is to test. So you could be thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm doing all that. I'm using um, a, a daily treatment or a chemical treatment and I'm shocking and, and I flush for the, the 20 seconds in between patients. Um, but really uh, there's no other way to know that you're within the CDC guidelines of that 500 colony forming units or less without testing. And so um, really not just testing your, your water lines, but you know, keeping documentation of your training standard operating procedures. Um, that's going to be really important. That's the key here is that you want to have proof um, that your protocol is working and that you're in within those guidelines um, and it'll protect your, your practice um, to have that documentation again for five, five years. Yes. Harley, so, that's a good like, point. I, I wanted to interrupt real quick just to drive home two things. Um, what Carly said was when you follow the CDC guidelines, you're protecting your patients, you're protecting your staff, you're protecting yourself. When you document it, you're protecting your practice and your reputation. That's the value of, of, of documentation. It's really important. All, there's a lot of OSHA experts that are out in the audience today and they, they can help you with that. Um, I, Kay Atkinson asked a question about surgical and I wanted to answer it real quick if that's cool with you guys. Yeah. Um, she said, what if you open the bottle of sterile water before surgery and dispose of what's left over after surgery? Is the, the key component here is that the system is, the delivery system is sterile, right? It's not enough to buy sterile water and put it in regular down unit water lines. I, my periodontist did that. He was bragging about using sterile water and I, I had to tell him, doctor, I'd hate to break your heart, but it ain't sterile anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, make sure you use the, the sterile delivery device, whether it's a bulb syringe or disposable hand pieces. And I just want to say one thing about that. It's cheaper than you think. Mark yeah. Frampton thinks someday we're all going to be using sterile water because sterile water doesn't cost that much. The delivery devices might cost a little bit, but you can reprocess those, yeah. uh, some of those things. So it's getting cheaper. It's getting cheaper and, um, and it's worth it. You can sleep good at night, no, especially if you're doing surgeries. Yeah, it really, it gives you peace of mind um, at night, knowing that your patients and your practice is safe. Um, so again, really quickly, these three pillars, um, one using sterile water and uh, sterile delivery system for surgical procedures. Two, keeping your dental unit wa water quality at the EPA standard of 500 colony forming units or less. And then three is your verification of compliance, your testing and your documentation. Okay, so now let's talk about how you can do this. It's easy, stress us, <laughs> but we'll go over how you can um, stay within those CDC guidelines. So we've come up with a proven protocol and this is our three steps to safe water. Kelly, do you wanna tell us what those are? Yeah, yeah sure. And, and we'll, again, we'll break them down kind of step by step, but uh, basically just to kind of go uh, briefly, and this is what we talked about at the beginning, kind of, and I told you we'd say this word a lot, but shocking, that's gonna be the, that's gonna be the first step. So the first step is to shock first. Um, and that's gonna be before you start any kind of treatment protocol. Um, we recommend shocking at least quarterly. Uh, and of course, if you ever have a test that fails, you want to shock. So take corrective action by shocking. 
uh, and then and you want to retest and to prove that you that you are in passing range. Uh, step two is that daily treatment. So a tablet or straw, we like those uh, the best. Uh, those are those are designed to be continuously present in your water bottle. So safe to use on your patients um, and safe, and they will maintain the lines that you get clean with shocking. Uh, so really important to use something uh, daily. Um, again, tablets or straws. And then that three, again, can't stress this enough uh, that you need to test. And testing is gonna be where the, the rubber meets the road, right? That's gonna be your proof that is not only recommended by OSAP, but that's gonna protect your protocol or your practice, like Mike said. Uh, and it also validates that you're, you're, what you're doing is effective. And uh, with COVID, I, it got a lot more people testing. And I think uh, it really was kind of an eye opener to a lot of people because we started seeing a, lo a lot of failures and people were like, oh my goodness, I thought I had this really good protocol and realized that they needed to just kind of maybe make up a couple tweaks to, to their, their uh, whatever they were doing. So um, of course, uh, shock, treat, test, and we're gonna kind of dive deeper into each one. Uh, first one being shock. Uh, and Carly, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, it's my favorite thing to talk about. We talk about it all, <laughs> talk all the time, every day. It better be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. So, so important. Again, shocking is using a strong disinfectant to clean the lines. Um, so there's a couple shock protocols that we see the best results with based off of our data and our research. One of them is a product called Liquid Ultra made by Crosstex. That one is a really great pro product. And then um, a diluted bleach solution also works really well. Um, if you wanna learn how to do that, you can visit our website at proedgedental.com slash shock. And you'll see a fun little video with um, Kelly B and Kelly T on, on how to do that. Um, quick thing that I wanna mention too, before we um, continue talking about shocking, is uh, you never want to put these chemicals through your evacuation lines. Um, so the, the way to do it is to flush into a sink. If there's not a sink super close, you can flush into a bucket or a cup and then down the sink. So you don't want that going down your amalgam separator. Um, if you're using a straw treatment, so like blue tube or Stericil, Denapure, um, you don't want to put the chemicals through or the shock chemicals through the, those straws either. Um, so we've kind of come up with a cool um, little way to, to make things easy. Um, we have a dummy straw that you can just, Kelly has one right there. You just twist off your filtered straw, put your dummy straw on to shock, and then once you're done, you can put your blue tube or whatever you're, you're using back on. Um, so you can always request one of those from us if you are using one of um, one of these products. If you're using tablets like Blue Tab, ICX, Citrusil, any of those, you actually don't need a dummy straw. So um, you're okay. You don't have that filter in there. So you don't have to worry about the, the chemicals um, getting in anything it's not supposed to be in. Um, okay. um, I think it, I, just to, I'm sorry, just I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, but yeah, with the tablets, I, I think sometimes people think, oh, I need a dummy straw because they think the chemical is in that dummy straw. It's just an empty take up tube. So you, you don't need to request a dummy straw if you're using tablets, just to reiterate that because we get a lot of requests for them after. And then um, just want to make that clear. If you're using a tablet, you don't need a dummy straw to shock with. Yep, just a normal take up tube. It's a normal, there's, it's empty inside, just like this dummy. Oh, <laughs> oh my. You can hand it to Mike for that one, but no, just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> we have a lot of dummy jokes. And this is um, our favorite question of all, Kelly. What if my unit is plumbed directly to the city water? Oh yeah, my favorite thing to, to <laughs> tell people. Oh my goodness, this is just my, the best topic uh, ever. I hate it. And please don't kill the messenger. Don't hate me. Um, if, you're, if your unit is plumbed directly to the city water, we, we recommend that you retrofit. Uh, you could have perfectly, your, your tap water is probably fine. It's governed by the EPA, the CDC. It's got to meet certain standards. So it's not that your tap water is bad. It's, it's, again, going back to the science of biofilm and the tiny, tiny, tiny little water lines. Uh, and without having that water bottle there, there's not a way, an easy way to shock. So we re recommend retrofitting. Um, it's it's cheaper than you than you may think. Um, Mike has a, a, I think, Mike, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the retrofit kit or about how much yeah, it is? I, I know that you had talked, to, you had well, sent an email about it. People freak out, oh, it's going to cost me a lot to retrofit. And uh, I called DCI this week. They make one that's universal. 
um, it's $190. That's the suggested retail. You can probably get it for less than that from your dental supply company, but you don't order it from your supply rep. You order it from the equipment or the service department because it's a part. That's what we learned. But um, yeah, 190 bucks for a two liter, a one and a or 7.75 or a two liter bottle. They, yeah. and, and then the service tech comes out. He can do four of them in, a, in an hour and a half. So and you it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. You, it you, is. Can, you can shock and you can treat. Uh, and it, it, there, it's rec uh, closed water systems are, are recommended by the CDC, by OSAP. Um, and, and again, shocking. Without shocking, uh, it's really hard to consistently get passing results. And again, it has nothing to do with your tap water itself. It's the, the science of that biofilm in those water lines. So um, there are other treatment methods. There's uh, um, the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the municipal cartridges, the, like the Dentapur has one, Stereso has one, they go in the junction box or uh, like in the foot of the chair. So it's kind of correct, connected to the city and then feeds your, your uh, lines. Um, I know that they, I believe the Stereso at least has a shock kind of built in. Um, and then there's also the centralized systems, uh, the, the filtration systems that you can, you can also shock through. But again, even with these, we, re we highly recommend and nothing against any product at all, no indictment. It's just retrofitting, having that water bottle there to shock with, is just so much more convenient. Um, it, it, you can get water, clean water in 10 minutes if you need to. Yeah. If you have a, fa a failing exactly. result, you can get water, clean water so fast. And, and that's the main thing. You want to take corrective action. You want to get clean water as fast as possible so you can get back to seeing patients and doing and doing your job. So nothing against any, we just recommend retrofitting um, and having that bottle on your unit. And any and any unit can get can get retrofitted. Yeah, and it's worth every penny. You're right, Mike. So uh, Mike, why don't you tell us about treating? Step two. Okay, great. I was just looking at the chat and the Q&A and uh, lots of good questions. We'll get to them pretty quick. But uh, so the most comprehensive study that was ever published was by John Molinari and Nancy Dewhurst about a year and a half, two years ago. They looked at 22,000 water test results from uh, our lab and from Loma Linda's lab. Uh, and what they learned was that even treated water fails 31% of the time, right? So that's, a, that's kind of a surprising kind of a surprising fact uh, for us. Uh, and then they broke it down. They looked at all the different types of products. The tablets do well if you follow the instructions. There's a shocking, pun intended, there's a shocking revelation that if you shock regularly, you get better water, water test results than if you don't. So when people say they use a tablet, they pass 77% of the times. When they say they shock regularly, they get really good results. 88% is pretty much perfect considering staff turnover and everything like that. The straws and the cartridges are pretty good. Uh, but in the real world, uh, right, a year is a long time to go without shocking. Low-level antimicrobials, tablet straws, they do work great, but they work way, way better if you follow the instructions and shock regularly, maybe more often than you think. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the low-level antimicrobials versus biofilm. So Clearly, this biofilm picture here is, and, and this is recent, guys. This is this is what we this is, these are some of the pictures that we get in, and that we welcome. Again, we welcome. <laughs> we want to see them. We want to, you know, we want to know. Not that we would ever condemn, or we want to just help you, but we want to know what you know. We want to see and be able to educate and help. Um, but the Lolo antimicrobials, so the tablets and the straws, they're again designed to be continuously present in your water bottles. Uh, they, they're safe to ingest, they're non-toxic, non-corrosive, they're safe to use on your patients. Uh, they also help keep you safe as a dental professional. Um, and I know Monica Sataki brought up a great point about um, keep, keeping the dental pros safe. We, are, we know we're talking about patients, but also dental pros, you, this, this is to keeping you safe as well. So the low level antimicrobial, so the tablets and the straws versus this over here, this, and I'm Italian, so pardon me with my hands constantly, um, <laughs> but my goodness, uh, but it, you know, over time, um, when you shock, you shock to get the lines clean. Um, and the little, the, the little blue guy or gal there with the sword and a shield, that's, that's representative of the low level antimicrobial. And it can handle its own when it's just against, you know, small amounts of bacteria, but over time, those lines sit stagnant, like we were talking about. They sit at room temperature. And so they just kind of start to, the bacteria starts to kind of pile on and it forms that biofilm. Sticky, sticky, thick, complex biofilm 
that may, that is the, the low level antimicrobial cannot remove um, because it's gotta be safe to ingest, right? It can't, it's not, can't be a strong chemical that we squirt into our patient's mouth. So when that biofilm starts to form or, you know, like we said, shocking is, is, is recommended often. Um, that's why. Uh, and and it, we recommend something strong, like Carly said before. So the diluted bleach solution or liquid ultra uh, is they're great options. They're not safe for your patients to ingest. They're a strong chemical. Um, I kind of think about it like cleaning my shower. Uh, I can wipe it down every now and then, you know, when, I, when I'm done or even spray that kind of clean shower on and I'm good to go for about a week or so or however long. But every now and then I got to get in there and I got to scr scrub it with, with some bleach. With water lines, you can't get in there and scrub those lines. You got to rely on a chemical and it's got to be something strong that's going to clean out those lines. So um, shocking is that strong chemical. The tablets are that low level antimicrobial that's gonna keep them clean for a period of time. Um, and so both are recommended uh, for, your, for your protocol. I love that analogy, Kelly, the, the shower's good. Oh, this I love this analogy, Carly, go yeah. ahead. Oh, this is even better, this is a better one. <laughs> so um, just like uh, going to the dentist every six months for your regular cleaning, you want to brush your teeth every day. So think of shocking like your regular dental um, or professional dental cleaning and think of the that low level antimicrobial as you're brushing every day. You wouldn't tell your patients, oh, you know, you brush every day, so you don't need to come in for your, your six month cleaning, you're fine. Um, same thing, you can use your low level antimicrobial every day and be consistent with it, but uh, that shocking is still necessary every, every now and again. Um, so this is a super cool way to think about it. You want your shocking and your low level antimicrobial. Uh, we're kind of running out of time, but we can quickly go over testing. Um, let's see, Kelly, you want to talk about yeah, testing? I'll, yeah, I'll speed through this here. Sorry about that. We're in a little late. I'm blabbermouth over here. Um, but yeah, <laughs> testing. That's again, that's your that's your documentation. So that's uh, again, if you haven't tested yet be, after reopening after COVID, really recommend that. So does CDC. Uh, it's not too late. Let's get those tests in now. Uh, that's going to be your verification. That's going to be your that, that's proving that your protocol is effective. Um, no matter what you're no matter what you're using, it's going to prove that what you're using is is correct is is working. Um, and save those those documents for five years. Um, and you just need to meet or exceed those CDC guidelines of 500 colony forming units of bacteria or less. Um, and it's it's really and that's that's your documentation. That's your proof. And uh, OSAP uh, recommends uh, quarterly testing as well, right, Mike? Yes, right. So on that new OSEP, it's not that new anymore, but the OSEP position paper, probably the, the guiding document on that. That's kind of why Washington State went with every 90 days. There was a question in the chat about Washington State. It's a, a dentist shall test their water every 90 days, every line, combined samples are okay. Um, but yeah, uh, the OSEP likes quarterly testing. It's because the instructions for use for most manufacturers say quarterly as well. And quarterly. Yeah. Shannon Mills is the expert. He did a thing last week, I think it was at OSAP boot camp, and he said quarterly testing makes sense because it's a number that you, he goes, the proper number is probably something like every 27 and a half days or every 33 or every 42 days. But every 90 days is something that we can we can wrap our heads around. It makes sense with the calendar. And the data shows that people who test quarterly, they just don't fail because they just get good. They develop a culture of shocking regularly, treating regularly. They get great, re I mean, perfect results, really. Right, right. And people who, and, and the more you test, the better you get. This is probably due to Kelly and Carly that talk to these people and say, oh, here's what you got to do, poof. They go from 60 to 90% pass rates in two tests. So that's pretty cool. So what kind of um, testing methods uh, are out there to choose from? Kelly, do you want to tell us about the? Sure. Yeah, and I'll go quick. So there's a, there are a couple different methods. There's the mail-in testing uh, method. So that will give you the third-party verification. So we definitely recommend that you do that at least once a year. The third, the mail-in testing. Uh, the R2A test method is currently the gold standard for testing. Um, it gives you a precise CFU count or colony forming unit count of bacteria. Uh, some tests come with overnight shipping, but you do need to overnight ship it to a lab of, of some sort. Uh, and then you get a report, you get that safe water report. Uh, usually you can get your result depending on the type of test that you do um, in between one and seven days. Uh, then there's also an in-office test. Uh, there's a couple of different kinds. Uh, 
The nice thing about them is they're 100% confidential. You do it in the privacy of your own office. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of hesitant to send it in because they are scared of what are my results going to be? Is this the, uh, the, you know, if I send it in, are they going to tell on me or whatnot? Um, if, if you send it to us, we're confident, no matter what, it's confidential. But this, you know, you're doing it in the privacy of your office. You can take corrective action and fix it. Um, it is a more economical way to test. Uh, if you do do the in-office test, OSAP, as, as well as we recommend testing at higher frequency, so maybe a couple of months of, of a con couple consecutive months, and then um, pushing that out maybe to, to quarterly. But we do recommend at least one year, once a year, do a mail-in test. So you have that yearly report. Um, and with the, uh, the in-office, you get the result in two to seven days, but you document all that yourself. You have a log you can document all those results on. And um, I know, you know, the first thing, especially right now, it's, it's kind of hard times, but um, it's a, just another thing you got to do. And it's super important, but we do have um, an option to, that you can save, save on, and that is taking pooled or combined samples. So what that means is you are taking an equal amount of water from your air water syringe, your handpiece, your scaler, and you're mixing all of the water together um, only as, as long as it's coming from the same unit. Um, and so that way you're able to test all of the lines every quarter. You don't have to pick one here and there because all of them are different, um, but you can mix them all together and get a, and take a pooled sample. Um, and it's 75% less, no matter, you know, where you go to test, it's, it's going to be less. So um, that's a really good way to do it. We've, um, you know, tested this and it's just as effective, just as accurate as separating out each line individually. So pulled samples is a really, really great way um, to test. Um, it's mm -hmm. official. You guys are all now Woo! nerds like Congratulations, us. Congratulations, you made nerds, it. Nerds, water line nerds. Nerds. <laughs> so you can, uh, this is the end of the CE portion. You can now go get your CE credit. Um, let's get that away so it, nobody gets a headache from that <laughs> picture. Um, <but laughs> Get your CE, you can go to cezoom.com and log into your account. Click verify. It's a green button. Click that on your on the, the course and uh, type in the code ProEdge2021. You have five days, so go get your, your CE credit um, with this. And you can take a picture of this. We can revisit and go back, but that's how you're going to get your CE credit. So now let's talk about what um, we have to offer you. We love helping and we want to give you guys the best um, the most accurate and effective information for, for what protocol to use. Um, so let's talk about uh, testing first. Kelly, do you wanna talk about the R2A? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so uh, like I mentioned before, there's the, the R2A uh, testing is currently the gold standard testing method. Uh, it's, uh, you send it into a lab. So our, we have, ours comes with overnight shipping, the R2A testing. Um, you FedEx it to us. Uh, it comes with that FedEx label. You just call FedEx, send it to us. Uh, and then you get that third party verification. And what we do is we, uh, we use an R2A auger. And so we incubate them for seven days. Uh, and then we count the colonies, we count the bacterial colonies. Uh, we incubate it at room temperature. That's why it's really the gold standard for testing currently. Um, and then you get your report emailed to you in, a, uh, in seven days on that seventh day. Um, we do have a subscription uh, option available to help you remember to test. Uh, a lot of people are doing that, especially now that Washington has adopted that as law, but several, man, we have tons of people on the subscription program. It saves you that uh, worry. We take, the, we take that burden off of your shoulders and just take care of the ordering for you. So that option is, is definitely available, but we have something that's even uh, more better. Or have, you, you talk about it, Carly. More awesome. We do have a brand new type of testing method and it's called flow. And um, the coolest thing about it is that you get your results the same day. So once you mail your samples to us and we receive them, we process your results or process your samples and then we get you those results that same day. So that's super cool. Um, it's, you know, flow is used um, with a machine that we have called a flow cytometer. And so that, um, that method is used in cancer research, cell analysis, antibiotic testing. So it's really the most advanced technology there is there is to, to test your, your dental unit water. So it's super, super cool. And we're super excited about it. And here's what your test results will look like. 
as you can see on the, the one on the left is for flow and the one on the right is for R2A. Um, so they're super easy to read. Both of them have um, that, they're color coded so you know exactly where your water's at. Um, and But if you ever have any questions, you can always give us a call. Um, Mike, why don't you talk about the quick pass? Yes, if you want to do it yourself, the quick pass is simple and easy. By the way, everybody, uh, stick around for uh, the Q&A and for the chance, uh, uh, and no strings attached, you'll get one of these, baby. You'll get four of these, right? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Cra we're crazy generous here. And the way it works is real simple. Uh, the, the combined sample thing is you take a little bit from the air water syringe on the doctor's side, a little bit from the air water syringe on the assistant side, a little bit from each of the high speed handpiece lines, a little bit from the slow speed line. If there's water in there, you want to test that. As long as those are equal samples, then your, your results will be accurate. You let it sit for one minute. I don't know if you can see this. There's a little teeny hole in that where after one minute, a bubble will come up. That means there's been the proper amount of water has gone into the membrane, one milliliter. In this membrane, there's a couple of cool things. There's food for that biofilm, so they don't have to be cannibals, but they are. <laughs> there's food for the biofilm to eat. There's a red dye that makes it easy to count. So if there's any red, it's time to shock, but you can count them and figure out uh, roughly uh, how many, how, where you're at. If there's a lot of red, you want to shock more than once, right? Uh, that's what, that's one of the things we've learned. And um, and if it's white, you're good to go. If it's completely clear, we got a couple of questions in the chat about they tested first. They go, are we that good? Yes, you're that good. Um, this is a passing result. Anything but this, it's probably time to shock. You, uh, so uh, it's a pretty simple result. It's cheap. It's free. If you, if you, uh, if I'll show you how to get that for the first, for your first one, and then do this every quarter, and then do a mail-in one every year. Oh yeah, this is a cool thing. A lot of you, there's a lot of cool people on this call who hand these out to their customers and clients. I want to say hi to Dr. John Rudin, to Karen, yeah. to Kathy B, to Jody Della Barba. Ooh, real quick, Jody, hi. She helped us do a video <laughs> this week. Jody's from Jody's from Philadelphia, and if you want to learn how to speak Philadelphia, just say Wooter. 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 This Wooter. is quick pass Wooter line testing. This is the testing log. Put this in your hey. <laughs> sorry. Put this in your binder with your other OSHA. <laughs> yes, Wooter testing. Awesome. Uh, but um, anyway, put this in your book with all your other OSHA compliance documents. Um, and it's a real simple, oh, by the way, I forgot to finish this. This is a classic Mike thing where he goes off on some rabbit trail and never comes back. <laughs> Here's how to do it. You take a sample, you let it sit for one minute, right? Membrane side down, dump it out, and then you put it back in or empty let it sit for three days over the weekend. Friday's a great day to do it, right? Incubates at true room temperature. You don't have to put it in an incubator. You just let it sit at room temperature and come in and read it in three days. And if it's read, it's your your time to shock. If it's white, you're good to go. We like seeing pictures of your results. Yeah, we like seeing, yeah. So send us a picture or if you have any questions, yeah, we'll we'll help you out with it. Yeah, and it's a good idea to label it and you can and you can take a picture uh, of of this. We've we've learned from our friends in Maryland that you that you can submit that with that someone who lost temporary had a licensure problem. They got their dental license back. One of the things they had to do is test their water. They sent in a quick pass with a date and timestamp photo in that log. And that's good enough for the dental boards to get their license back It's as part of that process. So it's dental board approved in several states. Yeah. So we also have a uh, daily maintenance tablet that you can put in your water bottle every time you fill it up. It's called Blue Tap. It's the OG of Pro Edge dental products really, um, but basically great um, tablet to use. You put it in your water bottle and you leave it in there all the time. So you don't need to uh, purge your lines at the end of the night or at the end of the, the week, you just leave it in there and you can be confident that it is stopping the bacteria from growing in your water lines. Um, our, our other um, daily treatment that is fairly new, Kelly, do you wanna tell us about Bluetube? I do love it. So Bluetube, I don't, I know I'm kind of small there, but this is Bluetooth. Um, it's, it, so we love, again, we love tablets, but we also love the straws. And so we came out with ours. Ours is Bluetooth. It is two six month straws. So you get, this is what the, the package looks like. I don't know if you guys can see it, um, but you get two six month cartridges. 
because uh, we know the importance of shocking. So we encourage you to shock prior to installation. Uh, and then at that six month mark, when you change out your straw, you use that dummy straw that also is included in here to shock your lines. And then you install the, the, the other cartridge and you're good for the year. So really, uh, we, we love straws, we love the convenience of them, but we also know how important shocking is. So that's why we did two of the six month cartridges. Uh, and man, we're seeing such a great success already with it. Um, we, love, we love the straws, we love their ide the idea of, of them and Bluetooth has, is just a great way to, way to go for sure. Um, we do have a bunch of videos on our YouTube channel too that are gonna, they're really, really great um, training resources. Look at my face, look at my facial expression in all of them. Uh, Kelly B, Kelly T, Mike, you're in some, they're awesome. There's a, there's a three steps to safe water video, um, how to use quick pass. So you can go back and watch that. Um, just the science behind our products. So there's, there's tons of videos that are super helpful. If you ever want to go back and revisit something. Um, and then, uh, we give Kelly and I, our, our favorite thing to do is have complimentary consultations with, uh, with you, right, Kelly? Yes. Yeah, Carly, absolutely. And you know this more than more than anyone. She does so many consultations as well. We both, you know, we're on the phones constantly, but that's our, you know, that's, that's why we love coming to, to work every day. And that's what I love so much about ProAge is we don't care what product you're using. It doesn't matter to us. We just want to help you get the best results as fast as possible. We, we're not going to try to sell you something or whatever. We're not in sales, Carly and I, we're not in sales. We're in the business of, we don't want a, any more Mimi Morales to happen. We don't want any doctors or dental pros to get sick. We just want to help you. So whatever you're using, we're not going to try to sell you something or try to, you know, push anything on you. We just want to help you. So all of our consult consultations are always free. Even if you test somewhere else and you get failing results, call us, we will help you. Uh, we just we want to help, and that's what ProAge is about. We're a partner. We want to partner with you, with your practice, um, with all of you. And um, we just and if we don't have the answer, we'll make we'll get Mike involved because he is the absolute expert and he knows everything about waterline. So, oh, but, but I've, made, I've made every mistake, that's for sure. So I've learned the hard way. I've heard a lot. <laughs> And we do. Well, so Kelly and Carly, sometimes they'll even FaceTime somebody or they'll do video uh, troubleshooting with people. We try to, they're awesome. You guys feel free to use them. If you, if you use our products, you get Kelly and Carly. That's probably our best product right there. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the free four pack of quick pass, we want to give all of you guys some quick pass um, to have. So for all registered attendees, you can go to proedgedental.com slash live webinar, enter the password safe water 2021, all lowercase, no spaces or anything like that. Just safe water 2021, submit that form and we will send you your free four pack of quick pass. So that's super exciting. Um, and then you can of course go on our website to get your log sheet downloaded and printed out and ready to go. Um, so again, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Mike. Thank so you. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Um, so we are going to move into the Q and A. Uh, let's see. I you am. Can, gonna, I, can, I can help I, monitor that too, Carly. Whatever you, however you want to do it. Let me know if you want me to monitor it too. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put this slide on too for the, those that need to see how to get the Z CE credit or um, or want to see how to get the free uh, quick pass. Um, but yeah, let's just jump right into it. Let's see what we have. Um, let's see. I have a question here. It says, would it, we, would it be better to use distilled water in a bottle unit or is tap water sufficient? Kelly, what do you think? Um, so you can use either. We, we like tap water uh, as long as, you know, like I said, tap water is governed by the EPA. The CDC has got to meet certain guidelines. It tastes better. Um, now, if you're, if you're using some type of equipment that States that you need to use distilled, you know, definitely do that. But we do recommend if you do use distilled water that you that you get it commercially and by the gallon. Um, just because in-office distillers, filtration systems, things like that, if you use those, fine, but test them first to make sure that they're a good quality. But tap water is usually fine. It tastes that tastes better. Sometimes it doesn't. Our warehouse water, we don't like the way it tastes. But um, in most areas, it tastes it, it, it's good. It's a good quality from a bacteria standpoint. Uh, distilled water can be 
bitter, it can be metallic. There's nothing in it, right? So it doesn't taste the best. So um, totally fine to use tap water uh, as long as you're using some sort of product. And, and even with distilled water, you need to use some sort of product. Distilled water is a hungry water. There's nothing in it. It'll grab onto bacteria quicker. So it's okay to use. Just make sure that you're uh, doing the three-step protocol. So shock, treat, um, and test to make sure that you're good. Here's a good one, Mike, from Sienna. How do we adequately shock, treat, and test our ultrasonic or Cavitron lines? Well, I can certainly tell you how not to do it because I've learned <laughs> that. <laughs> this is, you know, the Cavitron fail 50% more often. And I've lear we've learned why. It's because the lines are, instead of being just six feet long from the water bottle to the air water syringe to the high speed line, they're generally 26 feet long, right? There's a, there's a quick connect that plugs into the unit. There's a 10 foot cord that goes to your dual select, another 10 foot cord that goes to the unit. And then that last black part of it with the, with the tip on it. And so it takes, you know, with the air water syringe, it takes, you hit this, let's say you put the pink stuff in from, Denapur, it was liquid ultra. You put the liquid ultra in there. In three seconds, you'll see the pink stuff coming out of the water line. You'll see three seconds at the high speed handpiece line. But when you get to the Cavitron, it takes, it's one time it took me about a minute and a half. A minute and a half, yeah. Right? The line was so long and the water comes so slow. So turn the water all the way up when you're shocking, whenever you're doing all this stuff, and use the flush toggle when you can. But Cavitrons are particularly tricky. Cavitron, the dense black Cavitron, uh, they have authorized the use of bleach. They say to do it weekly. Every right? Weekly. Right, mm -hmm. so you can do it every week, but most people just go ahead and use a tablet or a straw, use blue tab or blue tube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's another question that Sienna actually wanted to know, which I think is really interesting. And I don't think we know the answer to it, um, but it says, are nail salons regulated with regards to waterline safety? I have a hard time getting a pedicure because I wonder what lies beneath. <laughs> I, that's a great like, I do too. Oh, same here. You know, I'd love to know that as well because I definitely think about you want, to do is you, you want to bring your own sterile water when you get a pedicure and just pour it into the no. Just, I don't even know if it's the water so much as the instruments. Like, are they yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's interesting. No idea. No idea. Deb <laughs> says, uh, how do we how do we handle rooms that are rarely used? So oh, I love that question. Uh, so I think Jackie was on this call. She's an expert in ortho, um, but orthodontic open bays and orthodontic offices use way less water, um, right? Uh, and so really the, some, in some cases, tablets are really a more economical way to go if you're only using a little bit of water per day or per week. And blue tab is probably one of the best ones because we know a, one bottle of blue tab is good for 28 days. You're never, it's never going to last 28 days in a regular dental office, but in an open ortho bay or an ortho office or in a room that rarely gets used, right? You've got an overflow room that you never use. A, a tablet's probably a pretty good choice there, right? You can even leave it dry until you need to use it and then shock it before you bring it out for use. That's a super good question. Carly, do you have something else you want to add to that? I know. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry, Kilo, go ahead. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I have a sister named Carly too, so I'm, I'm just answered. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so I was going to say too, I, I get that question a lot now, I think because, especially like in ortho bays or something, because I think of staggering patients maybe through for COVID. So some ops are not getting used as much or whatnot. So that's a great question. And, and tablets are a great option. Like Mike said, uh, uh, if you want to take down Carly or I or Mike's info, we would happy, be happy to kind of dig in or get you some samples of a blue tab if you need it. Um, but yeah, uh, tablets are a great option for sure. And if you're going to keep the water in there, um, what we recommend running the lines throughout the day. Even if you're not using it on a patient, just go and hit the or run the water on each line just so it's not sitting stagnant for too long. Great point, Carly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. This question says, our office just did the three-day shock treatment, installed the new filtered straws, and did the waterline test according to all the instructions. I'm so pleased but a bit surprised that all paddles did not even have one bacteria colony. Are we really that good? Is This this is the one that you answered earlier, Mike. Yeah, That's yeah. Great. It is that good. Yeah. That's perfect. All yeah. That's, That's That's gonna go. That is the goal. Exactly right. Okay, let's see. Mary um, from Austin, Texas says, we have a waterline shock treat and test protocol. 
um, and do quarterly testing and see great results? Can we extend our testing window? Additionally, some of our ops are not being flushed for the recommended time at the beginning of the day, but still test great. Is it necessary to flush the lines at the beginning of the day or and in between patients? Yeah, it's CDC guidelines, and that's there to pr protect you from cross contamination. Um, but it's not, the, but it won't stop biofilm growth. It's not enough. And that, but but it is. So it's kind of like what you both said about keeping the Best water. Practice. Yeah. Great yes. Test. Definitely in between patients, for sure. I mean, you want to, def, you know, 20 to 30 seconds for sure in between patients. Um, I know, I, I don't know if the CDC still says that two minutes in the morning, but I always, you know, say it's, it's a good practice just to kind of keep that water flowing. I know two minutes seems like a long time, but really, yeah, like Carly mentioned, keeping that water flowing, that antimicrobial flowing through the, through the line so it can kill that back, you know, keep that bacteria down um, is just, is just a good practice. And for your other uh, question, Mary, about um, extending the testing window um, from quarterly to less often than that, um, we do recommend quarterly testing at a minimum as well as OSAP, um, just because that's kind of the sweet spot. That's how you know really that your protocol is working. Most, most chair companies are saying quarterly too, Mary, so. And uh, let's see, Sarah says, do you shock before testing or vice versa? I say, Test before shocking. Test, test before shocking. Shock on the first day of every quarter. Use your tablet or straw every day. Test on the last day of the quarter. Then shock the next day, regardless of your results. That's the bulletproof protocol. Do that four times a year. Nobody can say they got sick in your office. You're safe. Document it, you're, and then mm -hmm. you're really Mike, this might be a good question for you. Um, can you talk about how to best set up sterile water line system if we are not doing dental surgery all the time? No, I, I can't. I don't, okay. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, just just kidding. Kidding. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great, thanks, Mike. No, just kidding. <laughs> We're not uh, experts in actually the, the sterile water delivery systems, but we just but, know how to use it. Yeah, so a uh, good question. Um, if you're if you're doing occasional surgeries, uh, like implant surgeries, uh, there are. I would talk to the equipment. Talk to your Benco or, or Shine or Patterson, or your 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 dental supply rep, and they'll have a they'll have friends that work for B and Air or or some of those companies that sell these hand pieces, Kerr, Cavo, Aseptico. A lot of them have these really cool sterile delivery systems for, and they're designed for implant surgery. They're mm -hmm. super cool. Yeah, they're, they, you can spend a lot of money on them, if, if I, but I, I but don't, I'm not an expert. I'm yeah. not an expert. We, we do know that, um, uh, that those guys are experts. I, I would defer to the, the experts on that. And even the sterile water, you know, you can just get those little, I know we have sterile water in the, in the lab, like little kind of containers that you can use with a, with a big syringe. Like, a, you know, I don't like the bulb syringe, but like a, just a bigger syringe May, may, may be helpful. But again, yeah, I would defer to. That's a good point. Uh, Shannon Mills talked about that last week, Kelly, uh, at boot camp, And he mentioned that, um, you know, with those new rules uh, in California that says you got to use a, an approved disinfectant when you're get, treating pulp, it's, it's when you're, if, you, if, you're, if you're doing a, a procedure and suddenly you're exposing pulp, um, and that, that's when you want to treat it with a, a known disinfectant like sodium hypochlorite or sterile water. Um, that's when you switch and you can go to that. Just get the DAP and dish and the bulb syringe and you're good to go for that part of it. But for the handpiece itself, talk to the experts. If you want, if you want a sterile water through your handpiece, talk, talk to the guys that sell those handpieces. Yeah, definitely. Um, this one says, when an operatory has been doormat for a week or more, what is the protocol to get the operatory back online? Um, and this is kind of, yeah, everybody had to kind of go through this with COVID and the shutdowns with that and everything. But we recommend um, shocking right when you open up the, the op and testing it to make sure everything looks good. And then, of course, use your daily treatment in there as well. Great, great answer, Carly. That That's kind of right. Really, if, if it's been... A a week or, or more, if it's more than a week, definitely, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, we have another Mary that asked a question saying, our rep from Menco said we didn't need to shock. Should we test units first to push the issue? Well, if you stick around, you get a free 
quick fast so you can test it for free right <laughs> yeah you can test it with your quick fast that you'll get um and you know it's I really think there might have been a misunderstanding uh, i think uh member denapier used to say no need to shock no need to test uh for if you were using denapier um they've since softened that stance that, yeah you know, clarify that with the manufacturer of the product probably a misunderstand a misunderstand yeah. or miscommunication or something so Check testing is really your only way to prove that it's working, right? Yeah, good point. Yeah, testing, testing kind of puts me was where the rubber meets the road. Good idea to monitor. You want to do that anyway. It's, that's how you protect yourself. Sure. Right? Document. Um, let's see. This one says, if you have an independent water reservoir system and are using tablets, should you still dispose of uh, water um, that's in the bottle at the end of the day? Is there a recommended way to disinfect the bottle? So you go ahead. Need to, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say Kelly. I was like, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Here's my, here's my answer, and it's just I'm the. Don't ask me these questions. We all say that. Ah. <laughs> so if you use a tablet, you don't have to drain the water bottle. If you use a straw, you're supposed to drain the water bottle, leave it dry overnight, right? Leave it empty overnight. If you want to disinfect the water bottle, most chair companies and ADEX got really good guidance on this. They say shock your water bottles with bleach every 90 days. Or actually, no, they don't anymore. Now they say we use a now use a shock product to shock the water bottles. Oh, so they just but, they, yeah, it, you can leave that. Yeah, save the you know with tablets or whatnot with blue, with blue tab or uh, even Citrusil ICX. Those are good in there for two weeks. Uh, they'll keep that water clean. Um, with using a straw product, like with the blue tube for sure, Dentapure, the Hue Freedy straw, you do want to empty out that water uh, at night just because there's no antimicrobial in that water. So uh, you want to empty it out, put the empty bottle back on the cartridge. With Sterosil, they do recommend just keeping the water in, um, but read your instructions for use no matter what product you're using. Or if you have questions or if they're confusing, reach out to us. We're, we're happy to dig into whatever you're using um, and help you uh, um, establish the, the best protocol and understand those instructions and make sure that you're doing everything everything correctly. Um, let's see, what about an expiration date on the, the quick pass for a shelf life? What, yep. what about that? Yeah, one year. Uh, one year shelf life on quick pass, so use it or lose it. No, just get your list. <laughs> but use it, you know, use it. Use it before the year is up. Um, uh, it'll get you good data. And uh, if you've got if you got one that uh, is expiring, give us a call. We'll take care of you. All right. Let's see. Cassandra says, as a dental assistant who does all the waterline shocking, what type of training should I be keeping up with? If I were to get audited of some sort um, here in the state of uh, New Mexico, Will I get in any trouble for not having training while performing the waterline shocking? Kind of an OSHA consultant question. Uh, Cassandra, feel free to reach out to us. There's some good Yeah, we do do training. There's some good uh, people we can put you in touch with. Uh, there's a company out of Texas called Dental Compliance. They can help you answer that question. They know the New Mexico rules. Um, we so, do some training on water lines as well. Uh, I mean, it would, it's just basically on teaching on how to shock and treat. I don't, yeah, again, reach out to the OSHA specialist, but we, we can definitely do a training with your specific office um, and even send out a training certificate. Yeah, we should charge for that. Sorry, just for the salesman. We don't charge for that. <laughs> we don't, <laughs> we don't charge for it. <laughs> Mike, Mike salesman, no, yeah, <laughs> Mike charge. Right. Let's well, see, here's another um, quick pass question. Um, Selena says, for in the office water testing, the instructions say a positive test may show white or clear waxy areas, not always pink or red. What does this look like? Is it obvious? Oh, so. And it, it sometimes can clear or show up as an opaque or clear looking film, and it's not very common, um, but the way to really uh, read your results is you want to see if, if you can, if there's any growth on top of the membrane. So you'll be able to see um, most likely raised bumps. If they are opaque, they could be there. You just got to look closely, see if it's on top of the actual membrane itself. Um, but you can always send us a picture too, if you need help. Yep. Exactly. And if it's, yeah. if it's inconclusive, um, uh, 
uh, you can you, you might want to retest. But by and large, uh, the red dye works pretty effectively, right? It's yeah, uh, if really red, good. Red, red grows if it's other than if it's yellow, that can be something. But if it's green or gray, that's probably contamination. Oh air, not mold. And that's not from the water lines. That's probably, that's probably a test that's been sitting more than seven days, yeah. right? Too long. And the air contaminated, contamination from the air. So don't, don't freak out. Give us a call. Send us a picture. Let us freak yeah. out. We have seen some, yeah, there can be like some opaque kind of bubbly thing. We've definitely seen that. Um, but you can also, Carly and I have seen this and Mike probably seen this a bunch too. Um, sometimes you can see kind of a yellowish hue or a pink hue kind of underneath the membrane where it's not actually on top where you can't scrape it and what that is is just kind of the glue showing through and you can actually see kind of a pattern it doesn't happen all the time but sometimes from time to time we do get pictures it's a it's pat it's a passing result it's just with the white membrane and depending on what type of, of product you're using and the, the the minerals in the water or whatnot it can kind of the in if you leave the water to if you leave the water soaking too long in that quick pass, it can get underneath. And so when you read the results, you can see maybe a little bit of the membrane showing through, but it's a, it would be a passing result. But if, yeah, if in doubt, uh, call, call us, send us a picture, email us a picture. We'd love to see and, and help you decipher, you know, if it's a pass or fail. And if, 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 if you think it may be a fail, err, err on the side of caution and just go ahead and, and shock and retest. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I just want to say hi to Christy in the chat. I didn't. I just noticed you. Awesome, chat. right? She is awesome. God bless. Christy is the best. Yes, Christy. She is. Yeah, we love that. A um, couple of fun questions, Carl. You want to take this, this one about the eighty-nine to eighty-eight to ninety percent pass rates are don't seem high enough. I feel like a hundred percent to sleep at night. Is that impossible? Yes, and um, I know in the perfect world, we would all want 100% passing results all the time, um, but really it, it's not uncommon to get a failure every now and then. Um, again, bacteria is super powerful. It grows super quickly. So the best thing I can say is keep up with your protocol. Um, just make sure you're following the CDC guidelines and testing to ensure that, um, that the, your water lines are safe. Maybe you want to use the flow test. That way you can get your results the same day. If there is a fail, which, you know, it is possible, um, there are, you know, even the perfect practices get fails every now and then. So well, we have hundreds of practices that get 100% all the time. Yeah, all the time. And 95% pass rate. Yeah, is that's awesome. awesome. That is true. It's good. But the data in that article by Molinari and Nancy Dewhurst is um, is that that was 88% over 22,000 water tests, right? Of which uh, probably 8,000 were tablets that where they mentioned a straw, where they used a shock. Right. So that's, it's really good when you put it over the course, over the, you know, an entire population of dentists in, a, in America, 88% right. is very good. So yeah, 100% 100, 100 is easy. Not easy, but it's the goal. But you can get it, yeah. And you know, uh, there. I mean, there's. If you have that, that's why we recommend that testing quarterly and getting yeah. that pro a really good protocol in place. You'll get cons consistently get good passing results. Um, yeah. But every now and then, yeah, you may get a, a slight failure or whatnot. Um, and you know, people call and they'll have you know one slight like nine hundred or something, and it's they're so it's so sweet. And I'm like, oh, it's barely a failure. Good. Let's just shock it and get you retested and. It's, it's that's normal. That's normal. If you didn't have a failure from time to time, you know, you'd yeah. be aw awesome, rare, but it, you know, it happens. It can happen. You know, it dawns on me that quarterly testers just, they just don't fail. They don't, they fail, you know, they fail, um, they fail one sixth of the time. They fail at 4%. Everybody else fails at 24%. So think about that. They just have that good protocol down, you know, CHCs where they're, they have that federally, you know, it's federally mandated and things like that, where if they have to do it for funding, they've yep. learned how to, to, to establish that protocol. And so it's not that you're the testing more often is going to get you better results. It's learning how to establish that protocol and, and learn and get it good. Um, yeah. The, the people that do test quarterly, VA, CHC, you know, people and several, several of our um, uh, customers, they get great results all yep. the time. I'd like to take this one, Carly, from Brittany. Sure. It says, we had just installed the Stericil dental system in the office. They installed an independent distilled water faucet, distilled water faucet, and told us we don't need the blue pill anymore. 
in the dental unit water bowl? Should we use the blue tab or just use the water as they recommend? Probably just use it as they recommend. I think they're, what you bought was uh, was probably the G4 or one of those one of those things. And if it goes under the sink, there's probably a final filter that elutes a little bit of silver, and you can use that to fill your water bottles. That's that thing needs to be uh, uh, changed pretty regularly. Check with your check with the rep. Make sure that they um, that you that that's the one you got. But if that's the one you got, yes, you don't need the tablet, but you do need to test it. And we say test it right at that faucet because. There's a dental school here. There's a hygiene school here in Denver that had that unit, and uh, it didn't last a year. I'm just saying you got to test it regularly. Okay, so um, I, I kind of a similar question. Do we need to use blue tabs in the sterile system? I was told not to. We were to change, or we were told to change the water bottle every 14 days. Yeah, uh, refer to their instructions for use. Their instructions for use say. Uh, change the water bottle every 13 days, every 14 days. I'm not sure which sterile system they're referring to, so it kind of depends. And feel free to give us a call. Yeah, we'll walk you through it. We, we've seen, you know, we've seen it all. Um, let's see here. Car Carolina says we mail in every month to test our water lines. Recently, we had a lot of lines fail. Found out the that the assistant was not putting the ice pack in with the testing water. Is it most likely why we had so many fails? It was never the same room. Oh, I'd love to answer that one. Sure. But my answer might be different than Carly's and Kelly's. I don't know. Um, but I'd say um, you'll want to retest. But uh, and, and you'll and you'll want to shock too. I think because um, we don't we don't know. Um, bio, yes, it's more it's accurate when it's on ice. It, that you want it to be accurate, and that's why we include the ice pack. If it's sat in, a, but it but it but it, it's not going to grow too much in 24 hours unless you're in. Or if you're in from Houston or Phoenix or something, this time of year it's probably not going to grow too much because the because <laughs> the FedEx truck's kind of cold. But um, that's a very it's a fair point. Yes, some growth can occur, but it's not going to. But a passing one not, is not going to turn into a major failure in 24 hours. No, that's what you mean, right. Right. Yeah, you know we get a lot of questions on that on contamination, and and it is really important to follow the instructions that come with the test kit. Uh, definitely freezing that ice pack. Uh, don't ship on a Friday. We. We love to work, but we don't like to work on the weekends. So we're not here. Um, so, or on holidays, <laughs> but, uh, and, and we have that happen, you know, people will send it, you know, over the Thanksgiving holiday and we're not here. And so it sits in that, in a truck and it could get hot. And so um, that's, that, that can definitely have a, an impact on the results. But like Mike said, usually we wouldn't see, you know, much, if, if it's a, if it's 80,000, um, just with, you know, if we get it the next day and you just didn't freeze that ice pack, I would shock, you know, chances are it's probably still a failure. Um, if it's maybe 600 or something, it could very, very possibly be just that it got warm. Uh, um, it's hard to say. I would, I would shock and retest just to be, just to err on the side of caution. And yeah. I think we have one more question, um, that I don't know the answer to, but maybe you do, Mike. Uh, are disposable, I'm the expert for sure. Are the disposable air water tips recommended over metal ones? That is yes. a cool, that's a super cool question. And Kelly's answer is probably right. Yeah, they are. Absolutely. Okay. And, but probably not for the, but the reason might not be that obvious because if you disposable air water syringe tips are plastic and you throw them out, they cost 22 cents, 22 cents a patient. If you don't do that, you're supposed to be using an autoclavable one. And the autoclavable ones should be sterilized. And when they're sterilized, you're not, they're not causing biofilm. You're not failing a water test because you put a sterilized one on, a metal sterilized one. But they do kind of get, they don't oh. last forever. Is that we've the, seen that one. We've seen one cut open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but they, again, it should be autoclaved and process, reprocessed like all your other instruments and it should be sterile. So it better be sterile, sterilized, heat sterilized or disposable. Yeah. Fun question. We're not experts on that, but right. uh, well, Kelly, but Kelly, has I am like, yes, yes, I recommend, I recommend it. Yes. Just because okay. I've well, seen, I've seen here. some things for sure. <laughs> yep, no, fair point, fair point. And actually, I think it was a, a, a college in California or something that they did the study and that finally they cut it open, wasn't it? We got it. I can't remember exactly where, you know, where it came up, yeah. but they finally cut that open their air water syringe and it was like the 
they sterilized it, but it was, I don't know how old it was, but it was like the, it, the, it was like caked on there. So it was, I don't think it was the, that was the whole problem, but I think it contributed to it for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, that concludes all the questions. Um, if you guys, if we didn't answer your question or if you come up with any more additional questions, you can always give us a call. Again, our contact info is right here. So any one of us are happy to talk to you, answer any of your questions. Um, and then again, get your CE credit within five days and then go get your free quick pass. Um, so Again, thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to join us today. Um, yes. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Mike. We always have so much fun together. Um, yeah, everybody, lots of friends and lots of experts. Great. Lots of geniuses. Hey, look at, yes, hi, Clarita. Yeah, Christy. Christy, you, thank you. Uh, yeah, you're awesome. You guys are all awesome. Diana, hello. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. Stay, in stay safe, stay warm, stay in touch. Right. Yes, call if you need anything. We are here for you. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. All right. We'll see you guys.